Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got Pastor Dan on the phone. He's got news articles. We're talking about them in light of Bible prophecy. Welcome back, Pastor Dan. Well, I'm really glad to be back, and we'll start this off with Arizona Governor Jan Brewer vetoes controversial anti-gay bill, and that's SB 1062. Jan Brewer vetoed a bill Wednesday that would have allowed businesses that asserted their religious beliefs the right to deny service to gay and lesbian customers. The controversial measure faced a surge of opposition in recent days from very large corporations, and here's the key one, athletic organizations, including Delta Airlines and the Super Bowl host committee. Now, watching the news on this, it seemed that Governor Brewer was indeed going to sign the bill. Then the fact that she had stood with her legislator when they made the law. But she was threatened that the Super Bowl would not have the Super Bowl there this year, which is scheduled to be in Arizona this year, that they would withdraw that if she indeed signed the bill. Seemed like right after that, well, it was the next morning, she vetoed the bill and said that it was not, a bill was not needed because this problem wasn't happening in Arizona. Back to you. I would have liked to have seen Jan Brewer say, You want to take the Super Bowl away? Take it away. You see, that's what the devil offers, and that's what he holds out for us. In other words, the motto of the devil is do as thou wilt. In other words, whatever you want to do, go ahead and do it. You want to molest a little child? Go ahead. You want to rob a bank? Go ahead. You want to hop in bed with your neighbor's wife? Go ahead. I mean, whatever you want to do, you get to do whatever you want to do because there's no laws. There's no restrictions, you see. And so... One of the reasons that people follow the devil is because he gives them what they want. You know, as you read into the Old Testament, you see that many people would worship idols. And you think, well, why would they worship some stupid stone or some statue made out of wood? Well, the answer is because it gave them what they asked for. Now, it wasn't the stone or the wood that was giving it. It was the devil, okay? But he does give those requests. In other words, the draw to following Satan is that he gives you what you want. He gives it in the flesh. Well, the Lord will bless you even more if you'll follow him and his laws and be faithful to him. But many times you got to go through tests that, I mean, just like, for example, I had to go through a test with Prophecy Club. And that is, am I really willing to go through difficulty? Am I willing to maybe even lose my house, lose our our cars, our mortgage, and things like that to really get this message out? Or are we just doing this for the financial benefit of it? Well, I can tell you I've never worked in the Prophecy Club because of the financial benefit. Now, that's not to say the Lord hadn't taken care of us. He has blessed us with some very, very nice blessings, and I do not want to take anything away from him. He is the greatest boss in the world, and I would not have the devil. I wouldn't work for the devil no matter what he gave me. I would have liked to have seen Jan Brewer stand up and say, not only can you take the Super Bowl, you can take the rest of it and hit the road, Jack. Because round here, see, everybody, look, you got to do the same thing in your life. You've got to tell the devil where the line is drawn. And you've got to say, no, I'm not going to. And then whatever the line is that the devil's trying to get you to step across, you got to say that. And you got to say no to the devil. And you got to say yes to the Lord and his righteousness, or the devil is going to just tear you up. Now, this is easy to see. All you have to do is look at the lives of people in Hollywood. (laughs) You know, you see this little nice, little innocent girl, and she goes into some singing competition, and she wins the competition. And then a few years later, man, you see her. She looks like a hussy, got all his paint all over her. She's drinking and doing drugs. I mean, I could go on and on and on. It's a story that's happened many times because when you say yes to the devil, he destroys your life. He may give you what you want but he'll destroy your life. So, no, really sad to see that Jan Brewer compromised on this, and I'd like to see more people, which, by the way, I guess I ought to say something here. The kind of person you want informing you is the person that won't compromise. The kind of person you want teaching you Bible prophecy is the one that won't compromise. Someone that is not trying to get your money not trying to build for themselves a great big ministry for their name. You want the kind of person that you cannot sway, that you cannot buy, the kind of person that will look you straight in the eyes and tell you the hard things. That's the one you want to be your minister. 
the one teaching you prophecy, the one that is supposed to be warning you, that's the kind of person you want. And unfortunately, that's not what you find behind most pulpits, most ministries, because they're compromised. Okay, compromise is, see, look, if you can give me a donation and change my mind on something, you compromise me. Now, tain't nobody <laughs> ever called me and said, will you do this for a donation? Will you do that for a donation? I remember hearing a story about probably the number one Bible prophecy ministry in the world. I know he's number one, and he's on TV, and I understand that the, well, I won't even name names, um, this particular denomination came to him and said, if you'll be friendly to this denomination and friendly to this idea, then we will give you a million-dollar donation. And he took the donation. You can't do that with me. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I was talking to one of our supporters the other day, and uh, somebody said, oh, well, if somebody that owned a, a casino was to give a million-dollar donation to my ministry, I wouldn't take it. And I said, I would. I'll take the devil's money all day long to win souls. Uh, you know, the wealth of the wicked is supposed to be turned to the just. So absolutely, positively, somebody that uh, ha had some money that wasn't earned the right way when he gave it to Prophecy Club, yeah, I'll take it. But you understand, there's no strings, bub. We're going to take that. We're going to win souls with it. We're going to teach the gospel. We're going to preach the gospel, teach Bible prophecy, and do the Lord's work with it. So I'd love to take the devil's money and do the Lord's work. Now, back to the point. In other words, any place in our life, we can't compromise. You've got to be willing to stand your ground. Look, if the person that won't stand for righteousness will fall for anything, you got to find out where your line is. And you should actually be looking forward to the day when they say either you take the mark or you lose your head because the Lord is not going to let any pain come to you in giving your head for him. He is going to see that you get the highest reward in heaven throughout all eternity. The One of the best things in life is to be able to die giving our life in glorification of our Lord. And if our heart is in this world, then <laughs> unfortunately everything else is too. But you see, this is not our home. We're just passing through. All this life does is decide where we spend all of eternity, brothers and sisters. And I encourage you not to compromise. Don't compromise any place. And since we're talking about radio, you should appreciate the fact that Prophecy Club absolutely positively will not compromise. And Dan, I'm going to ask you, have you ever seen the Prophecy Club compromise on anything? <laughs> uh, no, Stan, you've never compromised on anything. And uh, over and over, you stood your ground, stayed to the message, and stayed the course. Money doesn't compromise you in any way, shape, or form. You kind of remind me of, of my attitude. My attitude is the, the more money I get, the more people I feed. But That's right. your attitude is the more money I get, the more radio stations that I that's can right. go on and the more people I can warn. And so that's kind of how it is. No compromise. That's Well, it's got to be that way in your life too, brothers and sisters. I don't care if it's smoking or drinking or carousing or taking drugs compromising not praying, compromising and not going to Bible uh, study or not going to church. We, we just can't compromise. We've got to do it right all the time. No spot, no wrinkle. And then when the tough times come, God will remember and God will show up. Amen? Amen. Most assuredly. Okay, next article. Well, this is a real important one. Um, dramatic step towards the exclusion of Christians from public participation in both political and economic in the public forum. On September 5, 2013, the City Council of San Antonio, Texas, passed an ordinance by a strong majority, 8 to 3. It's a dramatic step towards the exclusion of Christians from participation, both in political and economic in the public forum. In essence, the ordinance allows the city council to exclude individuals from sitting on the council, being appointed to a government position by the city council, or doing business with any entity the city council controls, namely the city government of San Antonio. This would also go to contractors that are working with them. Anyway, 
what will be the crime demanding such a drastic remedy, simply having an opinion that differs from that of the members of the city council. Here's what one section of the ordinance prescribes. No person shall be appointed to a position if the city council finds that such person has prior proposed appointment engaged in discrimination or demonstrated a bias by word or deed against any person, group, organization, on the basis of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, sexual orientation, gender ID, veteran status, age, or disability. It allows the city council to act on anything it finds displeasing from any point in your life up to the moment of your appointment or hiring. The Family Research Council says any person who has expressed any belief in favor of traditional marriage or or in terms of Judeo-Christian morality regarding sexuality in general, verbally or in writing, could be barred from participating in public life on that city council. Not only does it obviously take direct aim at anyone who believes and speaks in support of the biblical view of marriage and sexuality, but anyone who has expressed distrust when Muslims insist that Islam is purely a religion of peace Coexist, which means that if you've spoken in any way uh, saying that the Muslims are not a religion of peace or one of the many other things, aspects of it, then you could be excluded from being on this city council. So is this dangerous, Stan, or is this just something we just not pay attention to? Okay. First of all, I like to put the shoe on the other foot in such cases. All right, so we have the San Antonio City Council that is basically saying that if you don't go along with the LGBT, in other words, the... We'll be right back after this message. The next speaker at the Prophecy Club is David Jones. At the tender age of 17, David was catapulted into a day vision and shown the day of the Lord, the day Jesus returns. The moon was bleeding with blood. All the stars of heaven were falling. The heaven was rolled up like a scroll. He saw thousands of people screaming and weeping and hollering and running in total terror. Everyone knew this was the end of the world. It was God. Jesus had finally returned. He'll be speaking Saturday, March 15th at the Prophecy Club, 2540K Avenue, which is on the corner of Park and K behind the Whataburger in Plano. Doors open at 6, speaking from 7 to 1030. He'll conduct a revival Sunday morning from 1030 to noon, same location. That's David Jones sharing on several visions of the end of the world at the Prophecy Club, 2540K Avenue on the corner of Park and K behind the Whataburger in Plano. Doors at 6, speaking from 7 to 1030. See you there. And now, back to the program. All right, so we have the San Antonio City Council that is basically saying that if you don't go along with the LGBT, in other words, the lesbian, bisexual, transgender, our filthy ways, if you don't go along with these, then you don't get a job. All right, so let's put the shoe on the other foot. What if the Christians were to say, look, if you're not a Christian, don't even apply to our company, our big Fortune 500 company. If you're not a Christian, then you can't come in to this restaurant. If you're not a Christian, then we don't sell you hotel rooms. What if the Christians were to start saying that? You see, that's essentially what they're doing. Now, I've been telling you that. Daniel is really a foreshadowing of the last seven years, the last days, the end times, the things that are going to be coming again. Now, you remember the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right. They were asked to compromise. He says, look, I made this big statue. When you hear music from the Satbut, Psaltery, Dulcimer, and all kinds of music, here's what you're going to do. You're going to fall down, and you're going to worship my new statue that I just built. And if you don't, you see that furnace, we're going to toss you into that furnace. Well, of course, Daniel sat in the gate of the king, so no one could question Daniel. Daniel didn't fall down and worship the image. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, well, they had to fall down and worship the image, or they would be cast into the fire. Now, we're just talking about don't compromise. You see, these men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, had already made their decision. They're not going to compromise in the way that they eat. They're not going to eat things off the king's table. They're not going to eat pork and things like that. And they're not going to fall down and worship any of the God. Now, he said to King, he said, oh, King, live forever. Uh, but you need to know that uh, our God is capable of delivering us from your hand. And if he doesn't, we're still not going to fall down and worship your image. 
And brothers and sisters, that's where our heart has to be today. Our heart has to be, look, if your job comes in and they say, look, we're going to have some sensitivity training and you're going to have to learn to be nice to the, these gays and these uh, uh, pornographic things. And you're going to have to put up with cussing in the workplace and, and porn on the screensavers. You're going to have to put up with all this sort of stuff. Well, look, again, when you're persecuted for righteousness sake, happy are you. But you got to really know the Bible, really know the Lord that wrote that Bible to have that kind of stance. When you know the Bible, when you really are close to the Lord, then yeah, he gives you the strength. And here's what you say. You just say, I I just, I'd like to get this straight. Uh, I don't like gays. I don't like anybody that sins and I'm not going to be nice to them. I'm going to do my best to try to tell them all about Jesus and to win them over to Christ. And you ought to know that right here and now. And if they fire you, then happy are you. Good for you. Do you not believe that God that made the universe, the God that made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all therein, the God that made the stars and threw them into place with his finger and called everyone by name, do you not believe that he will, in fact, give you another job, a better job? Will you not know that he is going to bless you powerfully? All right, all right. Let me give you a story. This is probably one of the things that got God's attention in my life. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you something here a little personal. Okay, here's what happened. Prophecy Club started in 93, so this must have been about 91, 92, somewhere in there. I was teaching a class in public speaking and another one, a sales course instructor and a management course instructor. And I did that for 13 years. And they came out with this new kind of a course. And it was for high-level speaking. In other words, like if you get called on to speak to the media in like a national media situation, and it was for strategic presentations, strategic speaking, very, very difficult situations where you may have to handle very difficult questions. Well, I decided I was going to go ahead and try to be an instructor for this, too. I was already instructor for five of the other programs and done that real well for a long time. So I went down to Houston for this training, and it was three days, and it's an instructor's conference, and it is no, I mean, one guy said I'd rather go through boot camp again than to go through that again. I mean, it is very, very difficult. They don't mince words. They will rake you over the coals. You have to learn to be tough and quick on your feet. So anyway, this starts out the first morning, and this lady gets up that's running it, and she tells a story about how she went out to the airport to meet her guru. This guru's getting off of the airplane. First, before he got off the airplane, these two people walked in front of him throwing rose petals. (laughs) I'm serious. I couldn't believe I was really hearing this story. They're throwing rose petals so that this guru could be carried across the rose petals on this giant pillow. And I'm serious. This is really the story she told. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to bring up Jesus. I'm not going to throw it down their throat. She has opened the door because she's the one that brought up the question of religion first. So now she's opened the door for me to tell about my God. Well, the very first assignment was to give a two-minute talk. Again, this was training me to be an instructor for this. And of course, in order for me to be instructor, I got to first go through the course, okay? And again, I've been doing it a long time. So the assignment was a two-minute talk on something you're passionate about. (laughs) I thought, this is bringing the moth to the flame. So yes, I got up and I gave a flaming, passionate talk about how Jesus came forth and died on the cross. I mean, it was the gospel. (laughs) And everybody was stunned. And I had several people to break come up and say, man, that was really powerful. Well, you could just see this lady. I mean, bristles on the back of her neck. Just hated Christ, hated the name of Christ. And yet they had put her in an instructor of instructor positions. Well, the next talk was something similar, and this went on for three days. And every time I got up, it was something about Jesus and something. And I was saying this in front of other people that I work with. There were some 25 probably people there. And I believe that because God saw I am not going to back up, that I will lift his name on high. 
I don't care whether people like me, agree with me, appreciate me. I don't have to have them as a friend. I don't need buddies. I follow the living God, period. Like it or don't. Just like I tell you, you can listen or you can turn the knob. Just like I tell people on TV, you can listen or you can turn the knob. Same thing in the church. You can listen or you can hit the door, but you ain't changing me. That's my attitude. I am a radical, and let me tell you, here's how you become a radical. You read the Bible. You learn the Bible. And the more you read and learn the Bible, King James, the more radical, the more on fire, the more determined, the more of a Bible thumper, the more you're willing to give not only your life, but your death also to Christ. Now, I mean your life in terms of all of your life. You serve the Lord, and you're willing to die for his name. Quickly, simply, easily. Lord, you want my life? You can have it. You want my death? You already have it. Whatever you want. There's nothing. There's no compromise. Brothers and sisters, if I could could just put one thing in your heart today, listen to me. If there's one thing I can say, you can't compromise. You can't be the Jan Brewer. You can't let somebody buy you out. Okay, if you can be bought off, well, I'll pass on that next comment. I'll just say, you can't be bought. The only thing that could buy you is the blood of Christ, and he's already paid the supreme price. And so now we serve him. It is not difficult. It is not out of our way. It is not trouble. This is just like, it's no trouble to go to Bible study. It's no trouble to go to church. And it is our pleasure to give. That's of our tithes, our offering, our time. It is our pleasure, just like every night when I drop to my knees. When I drop to my knees to pray, I say, Lord, it is my pleasure to come and to worship you. It is no trouble It is not difficult. I don't mind any sleep I might miss from it. I come to worship you, not because I have to, not because I made a commitment to. I come to worship you because you are so awesome. If I didn't worship you, the very rocks would cry out. I have to worship you. I have to praise you simply because you are worthy. You are holy, and I'm glad of it, and I'm glad that the Creator sent His own flesh so that I could live eternally. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to worship you. My pleasure. Back to you, Pastor Dan. Obama to Israel. Time is running out. Obama is trying to force PA State and divide Israel on a very soon time schedule. This is a report from Jeffrey Goldberg. When Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visits the White House tomorrow, President Barack Obama will tell him his country could face a bleak future, one of international isolation and demographic disaster, if he refuses to endorse a U.S. draft framework agreement for peace with the Palestinians. Obama will warn Netanyahu that time is running out for Israel as a Jewish-majority democracy. And the president will make the case that Netanyahu alone among the Israelis has the strength and political credibility to lead his people from this free peace. An hour-long interview Thursday in the Oval Office, Obama, borrowing from the Jewish sage Rabbi Hillel, said that his message to Netanyahu will be this, if not now, when? And if you do not, Mr. Prime Minister, then who? He then took a sharper sharper tone, saying that if Netanyahu does not believe that a peace deal with the Palestinians is the right thing to do for Israel, he needs to articulate an alternate approach. And he added, it's hard to come up with one that's plausible. Obama was blunter about Israel's future than ever. His language was striking. Obama made it clear that Abbas is the most politically moderate leader the Palestinians may ever have. I have to say wow to that. There comes to a point when you can't imagine this anymore, when you start having to make difficult choices, Obama said. Do you resign yourself to what amounts to a permanent occupation of the West Bank? Is that that the character of the Israel as a state for a long period of time? Do you perpetuate over the course of a decade or two decades more and more restrictive policies in terms of Palestinian movement? Do you place restrictions on Arab Israelis in ways that run counter to Israel's traditions? On the subject of Middle East peace, Obama said that the U.S. friendship with Israel is undying, 
but he also issued what it took to be a very veiled threat. The U.S., though willing to defend an isolated Israel at the United Nations and in other, national, other international bodies, might soon be a, unable to do it effectively. You got that? Might soon to be unable to do so effectively. So if you see no peace deal and continued aggressive settlement constructions, we have seen more aggressive settlement construction over the last couple of years than we've seen in a long time, Obama said. If the Palestinians come to believe that the possibility of a continuous sovereign Palestinian state is no longer within reach, then our ability to manage the international fallout is going to be eliminated. And I think they've been offered a PA state by Israel something like five or six times. Back to you. Brothers and sisters, we've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks. I'm going to say it again. We just had Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez, and he was shown a vision that a large meteor is going to hit near Puerto Rico. And it's going to send a tsunami a thousand foot high at Puerto Rico, but it'll be 200 to 400 foot high by the time it hits the east coast of America. And it will go inland anywhere from 20 to 100 miles. It'll also split America from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean. That's what his DVD says, and you need to get it. Then I came along and put the whole picture together. I showed six people, not one, six people that were shown a large meteor will hit near Puerto Rico and what the U.S. government is doing to prepare for it. Also, four people that saw a tsunami hit the eastern coast of the United States because the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. I show you also six people that saw America split into two pieces right down the middle, three people that saw large chunks of California fall into the ocean, three people that saw this split comes, here it is, here it is, because America causes Israel to split her land. Both DVDs, value 60, gift of 30. I strongly recommend that you get into some prayer. Matter of fact, I'm going to call fasting and prayer over this. I'm going to call fasting and prayer so that America will not split Israel. Because we split Israel, meteor hits America, forget Russia, we're done for. I mean, this nation's gone. There's not much left to hit. If we split Israel... And, unfortunately, Joel 3.2 says it will be parted. So, I encourage you to get this DVD. You must, if you ever listen to anything I ever said, call and get this DVD called The Meteor Gift Offer, 785-266-1112. Better yet, go to prophecyclub.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now, from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. The next speaker at the Prophecy Club is David Jones. At the tender age of 17, David was catapulted into a day vision and shown the day of the Lord, the day Jesus returns. The moon was bleeding with blood. All the stars of heaven were falling. The heaven was rolled up like a scroll. He saw thousands of people screaming and weeping and hollering and running in total terror. Everyone knew this was the end of the world. It was God. Jesus had finally returned. He'll be speaking Saturday, March 15th at the Prophecy Club, 2540K Avenue, which is on the corner of Park and K behind the Whataburger in Plano. Doors open at 6, speaking from 7 to 1030. He'll conduct a revival Sunday morning from 1030 to noon, same location. That's David Jones sharing on several visions of the end of the world at the Prophecy Club, 2540K Avenue on the corner of Park and K behind the Whataburger in Plano. Doors at 6, speaking from 7 to 1030. See you there. At the burning bush, God promised to give Moses a land flowing with milk and honey. We believe the milk is natural gas and the honey is yellow-colored crude oil. There are 30 scriptures in the Bible which say in the last days massive amounts of oil will be discovered in Israel and we believe we've been given the directive to use this prophesied oil and gas to fund worldwide soul winning. If you have questions about our vision, call 877-OIL-ISRAEL or 877-645-4772.